In this video, I'm going to talk about modeling electrical systems in the Laplace domain. Our goal is to represent circuits using transfer functions, which means that we'll be working in the Laplace domain. To help us explore this further, I want to create a table which helps us to develop Laplace expressions for each passive circuit device that we're going to use. I'll have one column for the device, one column for the Ohm's Law expression, one column for the Laplace transform of that Ohm's Law expression, and another column which defines the impedance of that device. We'll start with the capacitor. In a capacitor, the voltage as a function of time is 1 over C times the integral of the current. In the Laplace domain with zero initial conditions, V of S is 1 over SC times I of S, which gives me an impedance, a relationship between V of S and I of S of 1 over SC. For an inductor L, V of T is L di dt. With zero initial conditions in the Laplace domain, V of S is S L I of S, which gives me an impedance of S L. For a resistor in the time domain, V of T is just I of T times R. In the Laplace domain, V of S is just R, which is a scale factor, times I of S, which gives me an impedance of R. It turns out that these impedances look just the same as in phasor form, if you're familiar with phasors, except that I've replaced J omega with S. I also want to note that this impedance represents the transfer function V of S over I of S for each of these devices. I'd like to put this into practice using an example. I'm going to start with a single loop because it is easy for us to understand. I have a voltage source V of T and then an LRC circuit. I'm looking at the output voltage across that capacitor VC of T and there's a time domain current I of T as well and what I'd like to find is the transfer function VC of S over V of S. That's the relationship between the input voltage V of S and the output voltage VC of S. In order to solve this, I need to create an equivalent Laplace circuit. Let's start with establishing the impedances. L converts to SL, R stays as R, and C converts to 1 over SC. V of T becomes V of S, and VC of T becomes VC of S. In addition, I of S replaces I of T. I can redraw my circuit so that way I'm clear on what has happened. Then I'm going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the sum of voltages around a loop is equal to zero. Starting in the lower left hand corner and working my way in a clockwise fashion, I get negative Vs plus SLI of S, that's the voltage across the inductor, plus RI of S, voltage across a resistor, plus one over SCI of S, which is the voltage across the capacitor. I also need to notice that VC of S is just one over SCI of S which I can solve for I of S. It's equal to SC VC of S. Let's collect terms together. I've got V of S is equal to, in parentheses, SL plus R plus one over SC, close parentheses, times I of S. If I multiply all of this by S, I can clear the S out of the denominator of one over SC. This gives me S V of S is equal to, in parentheses, S squared L plus RS plus one over C, multiplied by I of S. Then I'm going to use substitution with the expression I of S is equal to SC VC of S. The very next step is that I'm going to solve for VC of S over V of S, the transfer function I want. When I do so, what I see is that the S's cancel. Secondly, because I would like my denominator to start with a coefficient of one, I'm going to divide through by L on both the top and bottom of my fraction. This leaves me with a transfer function, one over LC divided by S squared plus R over L S plus one over LC. And now you've found your first transfer function of a circuit. Now that was a relatively straightforward circuit, so let's move to something that may be a little bit more difficult, and that's an op amp circuit. In this example, I would like to find the transfer function V naught of S, the output voltage, over VI of S, the input voltage. And I have a op amp inverting configuration with VI of T as the input, V naught of T as the output. Connected to that input voltage, I have 10 kilo ohms, and then in the feedback part of the op amp, I have kilo ohms in series with a 5 microfarad capacitor. To complete this, I need to recall how op amps work. 
I'll remind you that in an ideal op amp, I've got two input terminals, V minus and V plus, and an output terminal. And in this ideal case, V plus equals V minus. The terminal voltages are the same. There is zero differential input voltage. In addition, the input current, IN, is equal to zero. So there is no current that goes into the plus or the minus input terminal. The next thing I'm going to do is find the Laplace equivalent circuit. The only thing that we really have to convert other than VI of T to B VI of S and V not of T to V not of S is that capacitor which is 1 over s times the capacitance, which is 5 microfarads, which yields 200k over s. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember my rules about op amps. Since there is zero differential input voltage, I know that the voltage at the plus sign terminal is equal to the voltage at the minus terminal. Well, the voltage at the plus terminal is ground, or zero volts, so that means that the voltage at the minus terminal is also zero. Secondly, I know that there is no current that goes into either the minus or the plus terminal, so I can almost ignore the existence of that wire. Using this fact, I'll write Kirchhoff's current law at the minus node. I know that Kirchhoff's current law tells me that the current in is equal to the current out. Let's start with the expression for current in. That is the voltage drop across the 10K resistor divided by that 10K resistor. So that's VI of S minus zero over 10K. On the other side of the equation, I am going to take the voltage drop across the series connection of the 100K resistor and the capacitor divided by that series connection. So I've got zero minus V naught of S over 100K plus 200K over S. To help myself out here, I'm going to multiply by S over S to clear the denominator of the fraction. When I do so, I get VI of S over 10 is equal to negative V naught of S times S over 100 S plus 200. I've dropped the Ks here because I can see that the kilo ohm part is going to cancel. If I solve this for V naught of S over VI of S, I'll get negative 100 S plus 200 over 10 S, which simplifies to become negative 10 multiplied by, in parentheses, S plus 2 over S. And now you've found your second transfer function of a circuit. Hopefully this video has provided you with enough theory and examples to get you started. As always, thanks for watching.